Hey guys, it's Luca from Foil Magic Cards. Uh, it's a new kind of website I'm starting and YouTube channel. And I wanted to go through one of my binders here. I have no idea how to do this. This is like my first video holding my phone instead of like recording myself on the screen of the computer. So we'll see how this goes. But yeah, I was just trying to understand, you know, what are the types of videos that people like to watch? And I noticed a lot of people like um, kind of people going through their collections. So I'll just go through my collection. You guys can, this isn't everything, but it's one of my binders and it's all foils and it's all old border foils. So for those who don't know, the old border foils are basically the first type of foils they made. And they're really beautiful. They, instead of having like the picture of the card foiled out, you have the border foiled. And it creates this really cool like iridescent look that a lot of people like. Um, for those that don't know, I'm like a magic investor. I have a business investing in magic cards. And pretty much 100%. Very close to 100% of my inventory is these old border foils. And the goal of this YouTube channel and the goal of my website will be to inform people about why I think these are the kind of the best investment you can make long term when it comes to magic. Um, here is one of my favorites, Skyship Weatherlight. This is the alternate art. So... If you're thinking about rarity, this is going to be one of the rarest you can find because it's an alternate art promo. Um, I don't know the numbers. I haven't ever crunched them, but I assume it's like, you know, 10 or 20 times rarer than a regular foil rare from Plane Shift. And this is another of my alternate art, Urtai. Uh, so one of the theories that I have when I... Invest in magic cards is that basically the price of a magic card in the long term will be kind of directly proportional to its rarity, right? Uh, if we think about the extremes, the most rare cards are like, you know, Black Lotus and Friends from Alpha and Beta. They have a super low print run, about 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000, something like that for the rares. And if we think of a card that's like, uh, printed into oblivion, they have almost no value. So this kind, this concept of rarity seems to be like really important, and if we kind of take it to its logical extent, it means that you know we want to go after cards that are rare. And what are the some of the rarest cards in Magic, in my opinion? After also kind of if you just do the math. After, you know, that alpha, beta, unlimited type stuff, it's really these foils. Um, it's for a couple of reasons. One is because the print run is really low. So, basically, uh, foils used to be a lot rarer. I don't know what the numbers were, but maybe like one in every hundred cards were foil, something like that. Um, and second, because it's really hard to find these cards in condition which is something that a lot of people overlook, right? So when you're thinking about rarity, you also have to think about of the cards that were printed, what percentage of them are near mint? And if a low percentage of them are near mint, then it's gonna create uh, basically an additional supply shock. And the reason why these foils are really hard to find in near mint is because they decay like very easily over time. So, especially if you get to kind of the extremes. Like say, you know, a BGS 9.5 or a CGC 9.5 or a PSA 10, it's really, really hard to find these, like almost impossible. Sometimes you can't even just find like a regular near mint copy on TCG player. So the sets, that had these types of foils started in Urza's Legacy, and the last set was Scourge, I believe. So here's a Scourge card, Ghastly Remains. Um, and, you know, part of what I'm going to do on this YouTube channel is I'm going to give you guys a lot of data that I've been collecting. Um, and really, the, 
the types of data that I've been collecting and the questions I've been asking are like, okay, well, which of these sets of the 15 or so that had these old border foils are the rarest? And I think the results may actually shock people. A lot of people think Urge's Legacy, like this Expendable Troop series, is the rarest, but based on my data, I think actually the rarest sets are the Mercadian Mass Block. So let's see if I can find a Mercadian. So here are some these planes here. Obviously the basic lands are going to be the most common to find, but uh, anything from Mercadian Mass or Nemesis or Prophecy I have found are super, super difficult to get a hold of. And in my opinion, we'll have the lowest print run. So here's another example. So this stamina here. Uh, so yeah, if I had to make a prediction, here's a nemesis card here. The cards that will appreciate the most in value, or here's a Mercadian Mass foil, uh, will be from that block. So those are the cards that I've been going after lately. Um, another thing to always think about in these sorts of situations is what is the number of cards in the set look. For example, for Mercadian Mass, it's a really big set, so it's a lot harder to get each individual card. So anytime you have a big set, it also makes the cards rare. Here's a nice uncommon from Prophecy. Very difficult to find. Uh, yeah, so that's basically what I do. You know, I just I buy all these uh, old border foils and hope they go up in value. <laughs> I got some Bloodhounds here, Goblin Festival, Blessed Reversal. Obviously, the rares are the ideal thing to get because they're gonna have the high have the lowest print run. Some Lithophages. Um. Yeah, and uh, I just plan to keep, you know, coming out with more and more information and data on these foils and and hopefully, you know, educate people on them. You know, what is the rarity of them? What is kind of the outlook in the future? How do you grade them in terms of condition? Uh, does it make sense to grade them? What happens if you get a 9 or a 9.5? What does that do to the price? So on and so forth. Phyrexian Reclamation is a nice one because of EDH. And I have no idea if this video came out well, but hopefully it did. You can see we got some Earth's Legacy rares here. Some Mercadian Mask, got a Fairy Conclave, which I used to play in my Legacy Landstill deck a long time ago. Or a thief. And almost finished going through this binder. Got another fairy conclave here. I got almost all the manlands. Missing the red one. Um, for those who don't know, too, like I started playing in, uh, or probably like my, I think my first standard tournament I ever played was uh, Invasion Block. So, you know, all the Invasion Block stuff, you know, Invasion Plane Shift, Apocalypse has a huge nostalgia effect on me, and hopefully on other people as well. Uh, and this is the last page. Got the Phyrexian Plague Lord, uh, Impending Disaster, Beast of Burden, Gus Cloak Sentinel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.